we the last one we did was the leader and the lead by me Osundare, right? If I'm not mistaken. Now we will be looking at a poem titled Bats. I'm looking for my mouse. A poem titled Bats. Yes, Bats. You know, in poetry, we write our poems in quotes. So, looking at a poem titled Bats by David Lawrence. Bats by David Lawrence. Bats by David Lawrence. Are we together, guys? Are we together? Good. Now, you know, as, as we know it, we'll just briefly look at the history of this poet and um just look at his biography you know just a general overview of who we are who we are learning from david Herbert lawrence his initials are dh was one of the most versatile and influential writers in 20th century literature best known for his novels lawrence was also an accomplished poet short story writer essayist critic and travel travel writer the controversial themes from which he is remembered, namely the celebration of sens sensuality in an over-intellectualized -intell world and his relationship with censors sometimes overshadow the work of a master craftsman and profound thinker. Lawrence was born on September 11, 1885. So we are looking at the you know, 19th century there. Yes. In a small coal, coal mining village of Eastwood, Nottinghamshire, in central England. Lawrence's father, Arthur, was a miner, and the mining boom of the 1870s had taken the family around Nottinghamshire. By the time Bert, as Lawrence was known, the first child was born, the family had settled in Eastwood for good. Lawrence's mother, Lydia Beard Saul, an intellectually ambitious woman, disillusioned with her husband's dead end job, and irresponsible drinking habits encouraged her children to advance beyond their restrictive environment but a sickly bookish child won a scholarship to nottingham high school in 1898 the experiment was unsuccessful and at age 16 he began working as a clerk in a surgical appliance factory one of his older brothers ernest died from the skin disease Erysipelas and Lydia drank into grief, sunk, sunk, sunk into grief. After Bert nearly died from pneumonia, Lydia devoted herself to him. This relationship, including Lydia's smoldering love for him, is examining death in Lawrence's largely autobiographical novel, Sons and Lovers, written in 1913, the early 20th century. The novel also focuses on industrial industrialism and explores the battle between the intellectual mind and the sensual body drawing from lawrence's experiences and influences it means he had a very close relationship with his mama he was like nigeria will call him a mama's boy after studying hard in the hopes of becoming a teacher lawrence was accepted by nottingham university college in 1906 by that time he had begun writing poetry and what would turn into the white peacock his first novel he did not enjoy the colleg collegiate atmosphere and spent most of his time at Nottingham writing and learning about socialism. Still, he excelled in his work and upon graduation in 1908, received a job at the Davidson Road Boys School near England, near London. You understand? It means Lawrence has been generally successful. Lawrence continued writing poetry and prose and he was soon catapulted into London's literary circle. Though he never felt comfortable within them. His mother developed cancer in 1910, and as she wasted away, Lawrence began writing Paul Morel, which would later become Sons and Lovers. You know, it's like he wrote for Mama as an investigation into his relationship with her. As an investigation into his relationship with her. Are you getting that? So. He really loved his mom and he is like a he's prolific he's successful he's renowned he's oh lord from england right the 1920s were spent traveling around europe new mexico and mexico in a period lawrence called his savage pilgrimage <laughs> gave it savage pilgrimage i can imagine he continued writing novels poems and modern books on psychoanalysis though only lady chatelet's lover Another novel heavily censored for its erotic subject matter. 
approached the fame and reputation of his acclaimed earlier novel. Following various bouts of illnesses, Lawrence died of tuber tuberculosis on March 2nd, 1930 in Vence, France. He died in France. Vence. How sad, right? Okay. Let's make progress. So, you can see a brief history of the project. You can see. I, would, I could tell you to critically analyze david lawrence are you getting that so you should be able to do that so now um without wasting much of our time we'll briefly analyze the poem now it's very technical this is where some of you miss it if you know you are doing something now you're a bit distracted pause this video please watch it later in the evening if you know this because this is this is a very technical poem it's very you know it's very tech i want you to listen to me as we dissect it and break it chop it line by line line by line it's a very technical poem especially if you don't pay attention but when you pay attention it's the most simple non non-african poem why can neko ever give you like you would love them for giving you this poem huh am i making sense guys so please let's make progress bats the title is bats so we'll analyze the poem then pre following weeks we'll look at poetic devices and um themes next two three weeks okay at evening sitting on this terrace so we already know the event happened that evening and it sounds like a monologue doesn't it when the sun from the west beyond pisa Beyond the mountains of Carrara, the parts and the world is taken by surprise. We also know that it's sunset, huh? Are we getting that? When the tired flowers of Florence is in gloom beneath the glowing. Florence is a place in now in Italy. The setting of this poem is in Italy. Probably when he was a voyage, one of his savage pilgrimage, he wrote this poem. The setting is somewhere in Italy. Because looking at Pisa, mountains of Carrara, most of you might have come across it in geography, or you have probably seen it in movies. I don't know. What do you think? When the tired flowers of Florence is in gloom beneath the glory, brown hills surrounding. You can see him talking about nature, a lot about nature, a lot and a lot about nature. When under the arches ar 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 of the Ponte Vecchio. Ponte Virtue, Ponte Ver Ponte I had to ask for the pronunciation. It's a place in Italy. When under the arches of the Ponte Virtue, a green light enters against the stream, flush from the west, against the current of obscure Arno. Now, this Ponte Virtue has been used in many movies, especially when I talk about Italian movies. So many movies. I have a photo of Ponte Virtue. I uh, will go forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is Pont for sure. I don't know if you have seen it in the scene of a movie. This is the place this poem was set. This is the place he was looking at. He was probably sitting in one of a shop. Now they said this place is now more like a trade center. We have a lot of smith, blacksmiths, dealers, and all that. This place says this place is not what it used to be. But you can see him talking about um the Against the current of the water and all that. This is Pont Vecchio. He was so maybe sitting somewhere here because the poem was he was talking about this poem at this axis. Can you see uh, the, what is the title of this movie? There's this movie where I saw in fact in the movie the guy and the lady ran because I had to really research on Pont Vecchio and I browsed about it and I discovered that that movie was acted. There are so many movies that were acted here. Here, there was even this other movie where they were chasing a guy and he was running a boat here. <laughs> So this is Arno. They say this is the place called the Arno. This is Pont Vecchio. This, this is very, it's a very historical place. Come browse about it. So let's go back. Yes. When under the arches of the Pont Vecchio, a green light enters against stream. You understand? Because of the color of the water, flush from the west, meaning the green light you're looking at is the sun setting. So it's set on the stream and it looks like it's a green light. Against the current of obscure, I don't know, the current is the water, the water current. So he went for that to say, he was observing, he now saying, look up, 
you will see things flying this poet really loved nature i think he was a romantist what do you think between the day and the night swallows with spools of dark thread sewing the shadows together he said look up you will see things flying between the day and the night meaning evening now swallows will with spools of dark thread sewing the shadows together swallows are types of birds there are birds you call swallows now i'll show you i have a picture of swallows let's go for more for make progress oh sorry i read backward a circle swoop and a quick parabola under the bridge uh, arches you understand meaning he was you know doing some dance moves and all that the birds were just playing here and there where light where light pushes through a sudden turning upon itself of a thing in the air a dig to the water now swallows are known for flying above water swallows don't fly in the evening number one i went to make research on swallows now swallows one of the features they don't fly in the evening and they don't go so high they don't go so high they just stay most times the surface of the water they're just above the water swallows don't go so high and they hardly fly in the evening by then they've gone to their nest a sudden turning upon itself of a thing in the air a dip to the water then he went for that thing and you think the swallows are flying so late he knows swallows well swallows don't fly late so you might be confused what type of birds are swallows again i have the photo let's make i have to show you this thing so be patient with me okay these are swallows this is what we're descri describing them swallows have these thin tails they have two of them behind like thread you can see when i talk about it like thread this is how swallows are this is what he was describing like thread this is, these are swallows they always fly during the day these birds are called swallows can you see them good let's go back and you think the swallows are flying so late now can you see swallows with spools of dark threads you in the shadows together you now who is describing the bird now let's go and you think the swallows are flying so late meaning it's all like them they now asked swallows are these things really swallows like i know this animal so well i've been here countless times see now dark air life looping yet missing the pure loop a twitch a twitter an elastic shudder in flight meaning he had a twitch he had a twitter you know that is the sound birds make then there was this elastic shudder in flight. you know how birds make that sound they make at night he heard it he said and serrated wings against the sky he kept on ob observing like a glove a black glove thrown up at the light and falling back he's describing what he's seeing there was a twitch there was a twitter there was this elastic shudder in flight this bird that he saw in the evening because it, is this really swallow he now kept observing and serrated wings against the sky i know the wings of swallows it doesn't look like it like a glove a black glove thrown up at the light and falling back like a glove a black glove thrown up at the light he's describing what he's seeing now he now went on to see with all these features i've seen of this bird up never swallows it can't be swallows it can't be this bird i know so well he said bats the swallows are gone no bats bats are the birds that on the evening you men like they are in charge they are the kings of the evening they rule the night you know whatever 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 he like never swallows but the swallows are gone at a waving instance the swallows gave way to the bats by the ponte vecchio changing guard you know how people do shifts like those of you who know some security personnel one we do six to six he must he must not leave till the other one arrives. The moment the other arrives, you know, now oh guy, you're here, right? So I got to leave, I got to go home and refresh. I'm coming back tomorrow. So it's like what they do is they change guard. It's like the queue for swallows to leave the sea or leave the sky 
is when the bats are right of like wow the bosses are here man we need to retire the bosses are here to take over they respect bats so they know bats now at a wedding instance the swallows gave way to the bats by the point of virtue they changed guard they were changing guard that's what they meant they're changing guard meaning you want to take over now the tone we change here now the tone we change here watch the bats and an uneasy creeping in one scalp as the bats swoop overhead flying madly if you know bats like, ah, all over the place so his tone has changed can you feel this disgust in his tone like this i don't know if it's anger or you know like hate why are you hating on the bats guy david lawrence <laughs> Let's make progress. He's talking about an uneasy creeping in one scalp. Pipistrello. Pipistrello. Pipistrello means flying mammals. Bats are mammals. But they are flying mammals. So pipistrello. They are examples of flying mammals. Now, black piper on an infinitesimal pipe. You know, bats don't die easily. Little loves that fly in air and have voices indefinite. Widely vindictive. He knows them so well. Have you heard? I don't know some of you. And you should be able to relate to this poem, this mental picture. Have you? How many of you have seen? Sometimes you're sitting six outside the bus. Yeah, just pass. Like they're so vindictive and their voice is indefinite. They fly. You understand? He's describing them. Rings like bits of umbrella. Is that true? Let's go. Rings like bits of umbrella. Let's go and check. I think I have a photo of a bat. No, this is swallow. Yep. Can you see bats? Now, if you're if you're still doubting, raise up your umbrella. <laughs> so you can see their wings like bits of umbrella. This is a bat. It's looking beautiful in this picture, but those creatures are man. <laughs> can you see the bats? This poet is talking about. See, this poem is deep. There's the denotative and there's the connotative. It's when we're talking about things, we we'll go to the connotative. Guys, pay attention to Miss Gift now. Can you see the bats? Good. Let's go back. wings like bits of umbrella bats creatures that hang themselves up like an old rag to sleep and disgustingly upside down oh boy why so much hate i'm sure you're asking but what is deal with bats it's not that deep now nah. i'm sure some of you say nah that you're nice to add that i hate what why, why? and disgustingly upside down the tone if i tell you comment on the writer's tone that is one question you should expect in your exam. Critically comment on the writer. So you will talk about how the tone was at the beginning, 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 then how it's changed at a point, and you would quote from the poem. Creatures that hack themselves up like an old rat to sleep and disgustingly upside down. Bats sleep upside down. Am I lying? No. Let's see. I have photos. Guys, I was ready for this class. I said my kids have to understand everything I'm teaching today. So let's make progress. Nope, this is some um, swallows, but guys, this is literally how they sleep. They hang themselves upside, upside. This is they hang themselves. They don't sleep in a nest, though. They hang themselves to sleep. Like he is sleeping now. To be honest, he's sleeping. I'm sure some of it looks disgusting. Is it disgusting to you? This thing is this creature is sleeping. Can you beat that? So that's what the poet told the poet is so disgusted like how can you just hate this innocent animal like that why now and disgustingly upside down okay hanging upside down like rows of disgusting old rags and if you look at the body small <laughs> man david lawrence is harsh what, what did bats do to him why the hatred and grinning in their sleep bats he hates bats this is we are talking about a bird in this poem nothing in china the bat is a symbol of happiness he said not for me can you see here the notes in which it was accepted he said not for me not for me meaning he will not he doesn't like but this is see corona he see for so it if only chinese will read this poem and also hated bad like him but in china that is why they eat it and that's why we have koro that is why they eat it they eat bats a lot that is why they eat it these people eat bats a lot. China. It's a symbol of happiness for them. But he said not for me. Meaning he won't accept the bats. He has rejected bats out 
rightly. Do you get that? Guys, are you getting me? So this is what the poem is basically about. Now, this poem is the poet. The poet um, um, rejected modernism. He was against modernism at all costs. When we start analyzing themes, you got, get to see the connotative meaning of the poem. You will get to see the connotative meaning of the poem. Are you getting that? Good. So let's look at Pontevecchio. Swallows. Bats, wings like umbrellas, and bats hanging. So, guys, um, we'll stop here today's class. I hope you had fun and able to read your notes, take down notes. Don't just because if you want to make reference to something, you can't keep going back to the videos. So, endeavor to do something, okay? Take down notes and all that, okay, guys. So, please take care of yourself, keep staying safe in this trying time. We'll pull through, okay? Love you guys, bye.